Thank you. Just curious, I see different uh, dress codes today. We have some people look like they're in business attire, like they're ready to go out on an internship, and others look like uh, just normal, maybe ready for the weekend. So uh, just curious, someone, the diversity of dress here, just curious. Someone want to tell me coats and ties, and go ahead. Uh, Dr. Williams, business and society class, dresses business professional. Everybody. Very nice, very good. Make a good appearance. Well, great, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I do not typically do lectures or speaking engagements, so bear with me. Um, when I was given the invitation, I was a little unsure if I wanted to do this, but when I heard lunch was provided, I was in. So here I am today. So hopefully the goals for you today, that you have a few takeaways, ideas, best practices that will help you in your business career, whether as a valued employee, manager, leader, business owner, or family member. I'll start with my story. PowerPoint presentation may be a little off because I decided uh, last evening that I'll start with my story, a little bit of history. Dr. Williams mentioned a few items. But uh, as he said, I went to Lancaster Catholic High School, um, graduated back in the dark ages, 1971. My first, one of my first jobs, well, I'll say prior to that, I used to do some banquet work where I, when I was 16, setting up banquets, tables, uh, did some cleaning work at uh, one of the local hotels in Lancaster. Uh, first started out doing some part-time work. Started to caddy at the Lancaster Country Club. My first position, um, real f summer job, was as a greenskeeper at the Lancaster Country Club. Any golfers in here? Okay. As you know, the Lancaster Country Club hosted the uh, Women's U.S. Open this past year. Uh, tremendous event. Um, they'll probably do something along those lines again. But at age 16, my father was uh, a 21-year career uh, officer in the Navy. And I uh, lived in Lancaster County most of my life, but in second grade, he was transferred late in his career to Alameda Base in California. So I moved to California from second, third, and fourth grade. If any of you have had any moves, that's a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, it worked out fine. Parents decided then, my father retired at age 39 from the Navy and decided to move back to Lancaster where we had friends, relatives, and he felt a better place to raise his family. I have two sisters. Back to my uh, 16, as a 16 year old, my father working at the uh, Lancaster Country Club part time as a bartender, ran into the superintendent and asked him if there's any positions in the summer for a, a greenskeeper. Superintendent said, sure, send your son down for an interview. Superintendent was Bill Mellon, very well renowned, uh, one of the top turf grass professionals in the industry back in the day. So I prepared for several days for my interview, as you may have had some interviews in your career. Um, rather nervous, obviously, 16 years of age. Went down the long lane at Lancaster Country Club. Not sure who Bill Mellon was, was looking for him, but anyway, got to the first screen, which is a cart path area. Gentleman pulls up in a cart, puts his hand up, and that meant stop, I assume. So I stopped in my car, and he said, didn't say anything to me. I went to win put the window down, and I asked, Hi, I'm Clark Tomlinson. I'm here to interview with a Mr. Mellon. Exact quote. And he put his hand up and said, I'll see you, and drove off. Didn't know what that meant, didn't know who that was. Continued down the path, got to the, the uh, Greenskeeper building. Was in the parking lot for about 10 minutes, nobody around. Finally, uh, another gentleman came up, and I introduced myself and said, I'm here for an interview with Mr. Mellon. And, uh, I saw a gentleman at the top of the hill and he said he'll see me. Assistant superintendent, I found out later who was Kenny Dietrich, was the gentleman that I was speaking with, at this point said to me, that means you're hired. So that was my first interview, didn't say anything, <clears throat> and I was hired. Goes to show if you know people, my father knew the superintendent, he assumed I'm a decent guy, but that back in the day, 40 some years ago, was how my first interview went. <clears throat> Second interview, Columbia Borough School District after graduation. Went up to have an interview with the uh, principal uh, about a guidance counselor position. I was an elementary guidance counselor. That was an interesting interview. That was really my second official interview. <clears throat> They're going through some real growing pains up there. There were split sessions, a building program. They had classes in Woolworth buildings, churches, as the buildings were being formed and, and developed. So it was quite a challenge. Super, the uh, principal at the time had just allowed or just let go the previous guidance counselor. 
and I know from my interviewing skills now, I'm, I'm the human resource director for our company, in addition to my other, other duties and responsibilities, that uh, you try and get the candidate to talk. Interesting enough, the principal spoke for most of the interview and shared with me his disappointment with the previous position that I was interviewing for. So I ended up actually being the uh, interviewer more than the interviewee. But you take your cues from people. You find out where they're going and how you need to interact to meet their needs. Lo and behold, I was hired after that interview. I guess I was a good listener and started my um, guidance counselor career at Columbia Borough School District, not too far from here. Interesting, you go through college, you're prepared, you believe you're prepared, you're now out in the workforce, show up for the first week of work, not sure what I'm doing, not having a real clue. Principal says to me, oh, by the way, I didn't mention this at the interview, but you are the coordinator of special education for the district. Ah, uh, well, what does that mean? Well, you'll pick it up, meet with the school psychologist, they'll fill you in. Things you're not prepared for. You'll find this in your career path as well. You get into situations, you get in positions, you need to rely on partners, you need to build relationships, you need to lean on people to show you the way. School psychologist at the time, Shirley McCarthy, was fabulous, was my mentor, um, learned a lot, truly enjoyed that, that experience. Just backtracking for a minute, um, when I attended Millersville, some of my extracurricular activities, in high school I was on the wrestling team. A friend of mine and I, a friend of mine and I went to Millersville and I thought to myself, well, and thought to himself, I think we can wrestle for the, the college team. I thought we were pretty good. I don't know if you know or not, some of you in sports, the gap between high school to college is huge. So we went up for an open gym prior to the season, went in, started to wrestle with some of the fellows from across the state or outside the state. We quickly realized we're not very good. We decided to not go out for the team, enjoy lunches in the, the cafeteria and not lose weight. So uh, again, different perspective. We thought we were this, we really weren't that, and we, we adjusted. While at Millersville University I joined, I decided to, in my senior year, be a resident advisor, resident assistant. I assume they have those here at the dormitories? Resident advisor. Mm -hmm. In the wisdom of the university, at that time it was a college, they decided to uh, put me back in the same wing where I was the year before, causing trouble and creating havoc with my friends and peers. Talk about open communication, I decided I've got a problem here. I wasn't the best uh, character back in the day. This broke a few rules here and there. So I called the entire wing together and said, hey guys, I need your help. Important lesson, always ask for help. I said, no, I was your peer last year. I'm in a different position this year. I really, really need your help and cooperation. Needless to say, the position went very well. What was my motivation to start the business? Like I said, I attended grad school, was hired at Columbia Borough School District, was working summers at the Lancaster Country Club. So it, we decided my partner, who was the assistant superintendent at the golf course, uh, Penn State grad in agronomy, was the technical expert, had the technical expertise, said, as someone before me, the other assistant superintendent, if he wanted to start a part-time lawn care landscape business. That fellow declined and he came to me. I was a second choice. Glad I was, I'm glad the first guy declined. We decided to, uh, yeah, let's, let's mow a few lawns, let's trim a little bit, of, a few shrubs, et cetera. At the time, Working, part, working summers and in grad school working uh, two years full time and while at Columbia Borough School District working summers, real loyalty to the assistant, to the superintendent at the time, which was Kenny Dietrich, not the fellow that hired me. At that point, we approached the superintendent and said, Kenny, we're thinking about starting a side business. Heads down, no eye contact, we were nervous, how's he gonna feel? Never forget his quote, guys, how can I help you? Never forget that. How can I help you? Instead of saying, what do you think you're doing? You guys can't leave, et cetera, et cetera. That was the answer. I've tried to mentor that through my business. I've had <coughs> several of my coworkers that came and resigned their positions, several of them to start their own business. And from that interaction, my response was, how can I, how can I help you? Two of the fellows that I um, actually, that did resign, we set up in their own business and they became very valued subcontractors for us. We sent them a lot of business in a subcontract mode. So one of the fellows after many years decided to come back. So you never want to burn any bridges, um, but you want to support people along the way. 
Again, motivation to start the business I was working at Columbia Borough School District. Um, back in the day, 40 years ago or so, the wages were not very good in the educational system. Many professors or teachers here, they may say that that still is the case, but I can assure you it's much better than it was back in the day. 1984, my, fourth, my fifth child was on the way, and on the wages of an um, educator and part-time at a golf course, I realized this is going to be a challenge to, to um, support my family. Hence, we started the part-time business. From 1981 to 1984, while I was still at Columbia Borough School District, started the uh, business. Also did some caddying. Along the way, um, as I was graduating with my graduate degree, I'm sorry, before the graduate degree, I saw in the uh, career office a posting of a position with Community Services Incorporated. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Community Services Incorporated, but they're a uh, residential company that was placing at the time mentally challenged adults. Many of the adults came from institutions, went to group homes, did not need to be at either of those places, so they decided to start a uh, apartment program. We were the guinea pigs, the first, uh, quote, house parents. We lived in our own apartment, and we had six to eight residents that lived in apartments as well. Our role was to have normalized living as much as possible. Some had jobs in the community or worked at Goodwill Industries, somewhere like that. But I did that job for 10 summers as well. Just to give you, I'm sorry, 10 years as well. My, my wife was a special education major, had very good background in this area. And uh, we both did this as a part-time job as, as well as the other jobs that we had. So that just gives you a little flavor of my path, why I started the business, how I got into it. It was primarily money motivated. However, I will say, outside work at a golf course is fabulous. Uh, there's nothing like it. Fantastic to be outside and had a passion for that. Just a quick overview, I went through some of this. Um, I had a partner, uh, Dave Bomberger. We worked together at the Lancaster Country Club. He's the one that approached me. Like I said, in 81, we put out the flyers. <coughs> Actually, uh, just another short note, people, people have been very instrumental and helpful with my career um, throughout the years. Kenny Dietrich, the assistant superintendent, when we said we'd like to start a business, how can I help you? We really didn't know what to say, and he said, I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm going to do. We have a membership directory here, and uh, I'm going to make a copy, give you the membership directory. Why don't you send some flyers to the, to the members here? Lancaster Country Club, pretty affluent group of people for the most part sent the flyers out, phone was ringing off the hook. And of course the members were asking the superintendent, hey what about these guys? It says they worked at the Lancaster Country Club, what have you. Gave us a great endorsement, our business started and we started to grow significantly. We initially worked out of our homes, we started in um, each other's homes, we kind of cut the county in half, I handled West Lancaster, he handled East. Hired some employees while we we're still having full-time jobs, my partner Dave actually was a real estate agent in addition to his work at the golf course. Um, 1984, I believe, um, well, we, yeah, we purchased a, uh, in 1986, purchased our first facility where we ran our business. 2004, we, due to our growth, we moved to another location, which we thought, we'll retire here. This is a large building. We weren't even sure we needed to, to purchase it. Well, we grew out of that in 2009. We purchased a building at, um, next to Kellogg's in Centerville, Lancaster, about 11 acres, and we're, we're there to this day. We're a full-service company, I'll speak to that a little bit later. Pictures of the two cast of characters that started the uh, business. Family involvement. As Dr. Williams mentioned, part of the family business uh, program here. Uh, my wife and I are partners. My wife is actually uh, on a part-time basis two days a week. Five children. My oldest, Chris, is not involved in the business. He happens to be the director of radiology for the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Uh, very big job. I don't think he'll be coming into the business, but he said don't ever rule that out. My middle son, Matthew, uh, joined the company in 2013. He's a pest control technician. Uh, came from printing technology for seven years. Decided to join the company two years ago. Daughter Liz has been our customer service rep receptionist since 2008. <coughs> Uh, Greg has uh, been with us since 1999, worked in our nursery, several other departments, and he's currently a salesperson account manager. We call our salespeople account managers. 
My youngest daughter, Sarah, works part-time data entry. She has a full-time job, may transition to our company sometime. Picture the cast of characters. I have three daughter-in-laws, and that's okay. Um, you know the difference between in-laws and outlaws? Outlaws are wanted. So I just thought I'd pass that along. But, 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 in, all, but in all seriousness, they're, they're a delight, but uh, sometimes a challenge. <laughs> you have grandchildren, you know, and you have daughter-in-laws, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge. If it's your daughters with the children, it's a little easier. But anyway, now a very good group, but that's some of the cast of characters there. Three grandchildren up there. Uh, fourth was born this past Sunday. Is, uh, is it Chuck Johnstone? Is Chuck here? I didn't see him. Chuck's not here? No. Uh, we were over last night to meet with my uh, son and daughter-in-law, who just had the uh, new grandson, Noah. And she said, what are you doing tomorrow? Are you going to stop over? I said, well, I can stop over in the evening. I'm going to be at Elizabethtown doing a little presentation. And she said, oh my gosh, I, uh, I have an intern, Chuck Johnston, John Stone, I'm not sure, John. John, that works at, the, uh, at Fulton Bank with me. Does a phenomenal job. Great young man. So obviously, Chuck will not see her for about uh, three months. She's taken FMLA leave, family medical leave, raising her grandson. So if anybody's a Chuck here, let him know that Cheryl says hello, my daughter-in-law. Already went, already went through basically the uh, career path that's up here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the entrance to our building. If you're ever down in the Centerville area, Kellogg's, that's our building. Come through the gate, stop in. Happy to give you the grand tour if you had any interest or any, any reason to do so. Some influences in my life. I recall Lancaster Catholic, a high school teacher, uh, Bill Kakovet was the gentleman's name. Just seemed to form a bond with a lot of, the, of our uh, classmates, particularly the men, in the, we were boys at the time in the class. Um, we would stop up after class just to stop in, get some reassurance, talk about personal things. Um, he, was one of, he was a coach as well. And just the, the way he interacted um, and was supportive of us will always stick with me. He currently is, or was, a principal in the Hempfield School District um, it's interesting, after you graduate and you go back and you talk to some of your fellow principals or teachers, Bill reminded us, he said, you know, you guys were seniors. I just graduated from college. I was four or five years older than you. So in a sense, kind of a peer, which was an interesting uh, example. Golf course superintendent, Kenny Dietrich, the assistant that I mentioned, his great comment to me was, how can I help you? I learned a lot of my leadership and management style from him. I'm very laid back supportive, always interested in your well-being. We say today that we, many of us were um, put through college because of his flexibility with schedules. When I went to grad school, um, grad school was an evening class, sometimes it was five o'clock. I said, Kenny, I'd love to continue working, but sometimes I have to leave it for you. He said, listen, you just let me know what's the best schedule for you and I'll work around it. Imagine an employer working around my schedule, but he did so. Ran into him at the, at the U.S. Open. Just a tremendous fellow. I remember we used to have uh, Halloween parties, Christmas parties for all his workers at his home. And at the time, he lived on the golf course. So this just wasn't an employment situation. It was a, a family relationship, as how we saw it. Graduate school professor, great influence on my life. <clears throat> Graduated with a psychology degree. What am I going to do with that? I said to myself, had some interviews with Boy Scouts of America, Big Brothers, et cetera. Thought that was okay. But prior to that, being an RA, we had to take a class in the counselor education department. So impressed with that class, so impressed with the professor that I decided that was my career path in counselor education. Um, enrolled in the graduate program, graduated and, and worked in that field for seven years. Also an elementary school, counts, school principal, Don Eckert, at Columbia Borough. Went through a serious building program. Board was the community, the school board, the teachers, everybody seemed to be at odds. Tremendous leadership. Had a great sense of humor. Everything was fairly light with him. We had classes in a Woolworths building from 7 to 12 and 12 to 5. Can you imagine in a Woolworths building? But somehow he made it work. Very supportive of the staff. Um, all these people influenced my management and leadership style. A little bit about our company. 
This is our mission statement. Great people creating, it's creating and maintaining, which we missed, beautiful landscapes, worry-free environments, and lifelong relationships. Our values, integrity, high quality, teamwork, and service. Maybe about eight, 10 years ago, uh, decided to go have a facilitator meet our company at the, uh, our coworkers at the Eden Resort. I felt rather than myself and my partner being the developers of our core values and of our mission statement, I thought it was important that our entire team, probably back in that day we might have had 60, 70 coworkers, but I thought it was important that they help develop the values, the company values and the mission statement. As a result of that half day session, we came up with high quality, integrity, and teamwork. That was their values. Point being, were not my values, I was part of it, but my entire company embraced these three values. We added the fourth service last year. Our slogan, great people, great results. It starts with great people. You must have great people if you're gonna provide great results. Some of our lines of business. We have the application services. We're a full service company. What that means is one of the few in Lancaster County and surrounding areas that are one stop shopping. <clears throat> Probably heard of True Green Chemlawn, Scott's. They provide lawn care services primarily. Probably heard of maybe Arborist Enterprises, they do tree pruning. Maybe Ponce Landscaping, they do landscape design and installation. There's many mowing companies out there. There's pest control companies, Terminex, Orkin, you name it. Our philosophy is we do it all, one-stop shopping. Clients like to have the ease of service. Their philosophy, we believe, is I'd like to call one company that can handle most, if not all, of my green services, my landscape services. So just quickly, land, lawn care, that's, we do organic-based lawn care applications, organic-based fertilizer applications. Talk a little bit more that, about that later. Tree shrub care, we continue to um, fertilize, spray for fungus, insects on trees and shrubs. Vegetation management, large parking lots that are stone that look clean to you or fence lines, how does that happen? We spray those areas or other companies. Large turf, we do a lot of school districts and colleges. We do applications there, organic fertilizer, et cetera. Pest control, inside and out. Primarily the pest control industry has going to exterior services primarily, spraying the exterior so the insects do not come across the threshold. I don't know if you get to see WGAL, but we were just featured a couple weeks ago. A client called in, asked us to identify an insect that was, believe it or not, a black widow spider. Very rare in Lancaster. I happened to be at the national conference in Louisville, Kentucky, and when I got the, uh, the text about this, and mentioned it to some people out there, and they said, oh, it's nothing, we have them all over the place. Nothing for us in, in Kentucky, but Lancaster, it's a big deal. So WGL did a nice um, article on us. Gonna talk a little bit later about having fun in the workplace, enjoying yourself. WGL came in, our marketing manager had the uh, vial with a black widow spider in it, active. Our pest control uh, manager came in, took that, put a vial in, and smashed it with a little bit of glass on his desk just before he came in in the morning. As he approached, the spider's not there, glass all over his desk. The guy basically was pretty rattled. Where's the spider, what's going on? GAL got a big kick out of that and decided to film that whole situation. So you have to have a good time in your workplace. It's gotta be fun. On the right side are landscape services, maintenance, edging, mulching, <coughs> shrubbery pruning, soil and seeding, landscape design and build. We have landscape designers. They install shrubbery, trees, outdoor kitchens, things along those lines. We do 60 or seven school, distri school districts and colleges. We do athletic field management, aerating, top dressing. I think soccer is big here at Elizabethtown. Is that still correct? Soccer, yeah. big deal? Um, we, main we maintain fields. When the season's over, we come in and slice seed, top dress, aerate, get the fields ready for next year. Do a lot of infield work as well. Commercial maintenance, tree printing and removal. We have certified arborists that uh, do that type of work. Mowing is not an area that we're real excited about, but back in 2009 when we had the economic uh, downturn, we were looking for renewable business. 
What I mean by that is your lawn needs mowed year in and year out, week in and week out. That's a, the that's a type of business that is renewable. Tree pruning is typically once and done or you might do it every three to five years. But we like the renewable business. Lawn care applications. You need to fertilize and, and eliminate your weeds yearly. You probably need to prune your shrubs yearly. Probably need to mulch yearly. That's renewable business. That's our specialty. Snow and ice management we do as well. What is it about us that's unique? Like I mentioned earlier, we do it all. One-stop shopping in the green industry. In addition to what I listed up there, we do irrigation system, irrigation installations, top dressing of lawns and fields. We're always looking to add new services. Another thing, we, how we believe we're unique, each one of our clients has an account manager. You're probably familiar with a salesperson. We call him an account manager to handle all the requests and service line accessibility. Okay, so if you call our company, you'll be assigned an account manager. You have questions, you want other services, you have complaints, account manager will generally solve those. We try to err on the side of the client as well. Client gets the benefit of the doubt. Did a poor job, I don't think we should be paying the entire bill. Works for us, what do you think's fair? We're in. We have a net promoter score, I don't know if you know what that is, but a net promoter score, <coughs> we, we basically um, poll our clients, ask them to rate us one being very being poor, 10 being likelihood to use us or use our services again. Last year, we've done this for years, net promoter score was 8.9, which is very good in the industry. 10's perfect. We really like to do technical training. We have 17 certified arborists. They went through a, a fairly extensive training in arbor culture. Lawn care technicians, certified landscape professionals. We offer this in-house. We don't have 17 certified arborists. But interesting, our mowing person, our one landscape person, our lawn care technician, they all had interest in learning more about other parts of the business. Why is that important and valuable? The fellows out there fertilizing a lawn happens to see a tree with some issues. By going through a program like this, he can intelligently and educationally chat with a client, make a diagnosis, and introduce them to our tree department that we can maybe solve that problem. We believe also our reputation sets us apart. Um, been given numerous awards by Reader's Choice, Lancaster Newspaper, Susquehanna Style Magazine, Lancaster County Magazine, etc. <coughs> culture of the company. What I mean by culture is the leader sets the tone for the culture. I've always believed that you have to have a very friendly, enjoyable, fun workplace. Must be polite to each other. Must serve each other in the hectic day-to-day -day operation. Someone comes in, can you help me? No, I'm sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> we don't want to hear that response. Sure, can you give me a moment is a better response. Always respectful, caring, compassionate, interest in everyone's well-being. And I think one of the most important is have fun. So all these funny stuff going on, guys doing goofy things, um, always in good fun, however. you know. You get through the, our spring is our most hectic period of time. At times we're walking through the hallway or out in the lot and our heads are down, we're thinking about ourselves and we forget at times to say, good morning. How you doing, Bill? How you doing, Sam? We encourage people to provide constru constructive criticism for us, our coworkers. For example, that happened to myself and a manager or two and a coworker, production fellow said, hey, it just seems like you guys are in your own little world. I said, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I didn't even get a good morning this morning. We welcome that. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. I use the example, I come through the front door every day at work. We have some, what we think are some very nice landscape pots with flowers and perennials, et cetera. I have my blinders on. I'm through the door half the time, I don't look at those. A new hire at one point came in and said, hey, you guys are a landscape company. I know you mentioned to me, please provide any criticism or suggestions. I think you've got some dead shrubs, perennials in your flowers, in your pots out front. Not a very good image. The answer is, thank you so much. We were not paying attention to that. So I would encourage in your career path, always ask for suggestions, recommendations. People come from other companies. They have a wealth of experience that can help your company. Just a humorous thing was passed around our office. Okay. We don't 
you, you have to have a, a barometer. How much fun and games do you want to have in an office? Do you want emails to be sent around that are kind of wasting people's time? So it's a fine line, but occasionally when you come across something that's pretty entertaining, we, we say send it. Making a good impression, title of the presentation today. We believe image is critical. We're in the service industry. Need to look good and sound good. We provide uniforms. A company named Cintas provides 11 shorts, 11 shirts, 11 pants, two jackets. They're laundered every week. They have our name on it, the coworker's name. These are production uniforms. In our office, we're wearing things like shirts, white shirts, black shirts with our logo. Our sales team, pretty consistent there as well. Important to be well-groomed. Looking around the room here, very impressive, well-groomed. What do I mean by that? Conservative Lancaster County, that's where we are. They want to see people that are well-groomed. They don't want to see the uh, 15 earrings hanging out of your ears, your nose, or wherever. Nothing against that, but in our industry, it's a safety issue. And also, um, you know, look good out there. That's why we believe uniforms are important. Communication, one of our policies is when we come to your home, we knock on the door. We introduce ourselves. Hi, Clark Tomlinson, I'm here to trim your shrubs today. If you have any needs, any questions, I'll try and stop back. I will stop back at the end if you're home to see if everything was to your liking. Our six-step lawn care program, we're coming to your home six times. Each time we knock on the door, we say hello, we introduce ourselves, we're here. We start establishing relationships. If we're coming up the driveway on a day like today, we see the, the trash can blowing down the driveway, we're gonna bring that up to the door, let the client know if they're there. If not, we're gonna try and wedge it close to the garage or what have you. We just do those little things. It sets us apart. Phones, we have a consistent way we answer the phone. Hello, this is Clark Tomlinson. Thank you for calling Tomlinson Bomberger Lawn Care Landscape and Pest Control. How may I help you? That's how our customer service reps answer the phone. That's how we answer the phone. We have 40, 50 phones out in the field. Our production people have phones. We have voicemail. Our voicemail is consistent. Same message, thank you for calling whoever is answering the phone on the voicemail with Tomlinson Long, Bomberger Lawn Care and Landscape. Please leave a message. Consistent, consistency, very important. Trucks and equipment, white with lettering, majority. Websites always clean. We do a lot of blogging, by the way, if you're not in the social media business, which that was foreign to me many years ago, but I'll tell you, you've got to be there today. Anyone that comes to our, anyone that comes to our office, whether it be a vendor or a potential new hire, we put a welcome sign out. A little technique I learned from our marketing firm years and years ago when I first arrived to do business, potentially do business with a company, big welcome sign in the lobby. Welcome Clark Tomlinson, Tomlinson Bomberger. Wow, felt important, I was recognized. Advice, talk to people, not about them. Show sympathy, empathy, and compassion. Recognize your coworkers. Thank your coworkers, your clients, your vendors, your partners, your friends, and family members. An area that I need to be reminded. I need to thank people more. I heard a quote recently on the radio. I, just stuck with me. Don't outmarket your competitors, outperform your competitors. Most problems with coworkers are usually a result of a conversation that did not take place or did not take place properly. We have a tendency in our company sometimes when there's an issue that needs to be addressed, we put it off and put it off and think it may go away. Got to address those head on. Rewards and recognition. Very important, um, very close to my heart. These are just some of the things that as a company that we provide. On your birthday, you're gonna get a birthday card signed by me and my wife with two movie tickets. Thanksgiving card. We have company meetings around thanks, well, throughout the course of the year with the entire company. We have about 100 employees. We call them coworkers, by the way. Give a Thanksgiving card and a thank you card. <coughs> years of service awards, very important. Recognize people for five years, 10 years, 15. Coworker came to me originally and said, or recently said, why don't we recognize the first year people? Well, that's a great idea. Why don't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? 
Many times as leaders, we think as leaders, we have to provide all the answers, all the decisions. Let me tell you, over the years, some of the best ideas, suggestions, and policies have come from coworkers. In the summer after it's hot, humid, went through a tough spring because we've been working so much overtime, we bring an ice cream truck in, make your own Sunday. People appreciate that. We do some cookouts every month or so. The managers do a cookout for their coworkers when they come back at the end of the day. Thank you notes. Believe it or not, one of our coworkers, our sales manager, one of his personal goals is to send a thousand thank you cards out a year. And he does it year in and year out. Great lesson for me. If I can get about 40 or 50 out, that's a success story for me, but I need to get closer to that thousand. And all it is, I got one the other day. Thanks for your generosity on, a, on, my, on the birthday card that you gave me. That's it. Doesn't take long, a thank you note. I give bed and breakfast vouchers out for the executive team. They're my advisory group, my advisory board, for their spouse, what have you, for a long weekend. Comment cards and phone messages. We get a lot of nice comments about our coworkers, about our production people. And uh, we post those on a little television we have out in the crew room that's constantly going. I saw the Dow Jones um, television screen out there. That's what we have. Talks about all the exciting things and the great comments we're getting. Um, we have a manager recognition budget per employee. Each manager has X amount of dollars to give out through the course of the year. More formal, we do a company picnic at the Barnstormers this past year. A couple years ago, I got to throw the ball out, the first ball. That was a thrill. A little 10-year-old next to me threw a strike. The catcher almost had to jump out of the stadium to catch the ball that I threw. So, But uh, Silo did give me the ball, so that was exciting. Christmas party, we always give gifts and have a Christmas party. Our profit sharing retirement plan is interesting. We give out, uh, instead of a 401k that you have to match, I learned this at the Lancaster Country Club. When they introduced a 401k, most of the old timers said, oh, the company's trying to rip me off. I'm not putting anything in there. Well, lo and behold, guess what? They have no retirement because they didn't, the company would have matched whatever they put in. Always seem to be there's some, they're trying to pull something on me. The board's trying to do this. Dave and I made the decision, we're gonna have a profit sharing retirement plan. What that means is, based on our profitability, we guarantee 3% of your gross income goes into your retirement fund every year. The more profitable we are, the more we put in. Last two years, <coughs> we put 7% of your gross income into a, a retirement fund. In addition, they can do a 401k as well. If we're profitable, I give a bonus check based on their gross income, a one, two percent of their gross income to start the, the year back. Most people are on layoff, so we do that. Lead program, just quickly, kind of winding down here. We have a coworker lead program. If you're out in a property, you notice that a tree, for example, has some dead um, branches in it. You call back to our office and say that you noticed this with a, the customer's name, number, what have you. And we reach out to that client. If we have an appointment set, our coworker gets paid $10. People are making thousands of dollars by just looking around the property, what opportunities are out there. Last year, our company brought in a quarter of a million dollars in leads from this program from our coworkers. Dynamic program that we introduced five or six years ago. And we pay out not near what we do in advertising to get these clients. If you happen to give a lead for a, that comes out to be $5,000, which isn't hard, notice a property that needs their shrubs replaced, a few trees planted, our designer goes out, sells a $5,000 job, you get a $100 bonus. That gets reset, you can do it again. <coughs> Client referral program, we ask clients to refer other clients. If they do so, they receive a $50 check in the mail and a thank you note from me. Year to date, our clients have referred us $150,000 in sales that we've contracted. We have a 69 to 75% closing rate. Why not? A valued client of ours refers a friend of theirs. If I say to you, hey, I'm looking for some accounting help. Who do you use? A valued friend says I use X, guess what? I'm going to company X. Been a very beneficial program for us. A couple notes on leadership. Probably heard of style. There's rigor and compassion. You heard of that? Anybody? Rigor meaning it's always by the rules. It's nothing, there's no negotiation here. It's my way. That's it. That's the way our policy is written. This is what we're going to do. And the other side it slides to compassion. So there's two ends of the spectrum. There's time that you need to be rigorous. I've always erred on the side of compassion. Just throw this out. We have a drug policy at our company. Here's our drug policy. We do pre-hire drug screens, background checks, et cetera, et cetera. Once you're in the company, 
for example, when you have an accident, we have post-accident post drug screens. You have to go down, have a drug screen. If you come back positive, how many think you should be dismissed? Come back with a positive drug test after an accident. You had a car, you know, a truck had a little accident. Go back for, down for the drug screen, they came back and they knew they had to take the test. They come back positive. How many think employment should continue? Raise your hand. No, no that's fine. How many think they should be dismissed? How many not sure? That's the majority, okay. Here's our policy. Our policy is, first mistake, we'll work with you. You're gonna be required to, to seek drug and alcohol counseling, whether it be inpatient or outpatient. If you do that, and you're subject to random testing when you come back, you can continue employment. First strike, you're not out. I believe that's erring on compassion. Some people have no tolerance for that whatsoever. I believe people deserve second chances. Right or wrong, that's, our, that's where the example is on compassion. Getting close to, to ending here. This is a picture of the dealing with rewards and recognition. I had the privilege, I'm a very avid golfer, privilege back in, uh, not sure exactly when that was, probably 2006. I was invited by one of my vendors, John Deere, to attend a pro-am at the uh, John Deere Moline, Illinois. Um, the John Deere Classic, probably heard of it. Jordan Spieth won a couple years ago, really started his career. But I was paired with uh, President John Deere Landscapes. That's me in the blue shirt. The fellow in the middle is Tim Heron, golf professional. His nickname was Lumpy. I consider myself Lumpy Junior for that tournament. I was a little overweight. President John Deere Landscapes says, hey, let, watch this. He says, let's have a little fun with, with uh, Timmy Heron. He says, uh, Mr. Heron, how would you like to be a dress, knowing his nickname was Lumpy? Tim Heron looked at us with a little twinkle in his eye and said, uh, Tim will be just fine. Didn't want any parts of his nickname Lumpy, but that was his, his nickname. We had a caddy, the caddy, the caddy for Tim Heron, and we were able to bring a caddy ourselves. I brought my, my son to the one event. First hole, we all fortunately got off the tee. It's a, you know, we're a nervous wreck. You're playing in front of crowds. We all got on the green for some reason. You had to have a certain handicap to get in these things. Can't be spraying it all over the place. Heron's away. He's about 45 feet away on the green. He putts first. We're all closer than him. Go, go figure. The pro's the farthest away. He drains this putt. Goes in the hole. The caddy starts jumping up and down. He said, unbelievable, guys. This is it. Heron's done for the day. He will not be helping you the rest of the round. I'm telling you, he has no more birdies in him. Did that, did that relax us? We were relaxed. Tim's just over there smiling and laughing. Well, he did help us more the rest of the day, but a great way to set people at ease. Again, having fun. Then I had even a, a my first real thrill was playing in the Bear Advantage, the senior tournament. I got invited by Bear Company in 2004 in Kansas City. Played with Wayne Levy, he was the uh, player of the year in 2004, I think, I'm not really sure. But uh, tremendous experience. My reason for recognition, what I wanted to say is, I can understand where the professional golfers, professional athletes tend to get big heads, tend to think they're above a lot of different things. We're out in the golf course, this is the three day, the real deal, they're playing for hundreds and thousands of dollars. I'm an amateur in this tournament. You're playing with the pro to try and play in the last day if you shoot the eight or 10 high, lowest scores you play the last day. When I'm out there a nervous wreck in the first day, they announce your name, tee off. Got it, thank God I got it up in, the, up in the air. I said to my guardian angel, hey, please help me get this thing up in the air off the first tee. I did, start walking off. Levy comes around, puts his arm around me, the pro, and says, Clark, great shot. We're gonna have a blast today. Just relax, it's, it's just gonna be fun. Your caddy's my caddy, enjoy yourself. But the recognition piece, <coughs> think about it. You hit a golf shot, you put it on the green close, and the place is going wild. I mean, talk about recognition. I can see where these fellows, at times, get a little bit over their head. We walked off the 18th. Uh, big thrill, galleries, so forth and so on. As you get off the, uh, walking off the, the green, representative comes up, shakes your hands, knows, I don't know how, knows my name and says, Mr. Tomlinson, we hope you enjoyed yourself today. I'd like you to head over and have some lunch with the players. <coughs> Recognition, people, at, at a major tournament like this, I was recognized. How did that make me feel? Made me feel fabulous. Okay, I think that's, yes, uh, two minutes over. Apologize for that. Open it up for questions. Hopefully it was helpful for you, some of the tips. Question back there.
actually, I believe in the, uh, the fact that there is a tremendous amount of business out there. Um, there's enough business to go around. I think we did an analysis not too long ago that we have 3,500 lawn care clients in, uh, in our geographic zone. Lancaster newspaper just said there's 500,000 people in Lancaster County. There's hundreds of thousands of homes. We haven't scratched the surface. There's enough business to, to be out there for everyone. Yep. Matter of fact, good competition keeps us on our toes. Other questions? Yes? You talked a lot about like, compassion and treating your employees, right? Um, what do you do if you have like unmotivated employees who don't want to be the work or like, are bad workers? Yeah, again, we've made mistakes over the years. We've uh, kept people too long. But our process there is, if it's whether a new coworker, new hire, or someone that's just their, their production starting to slack, um, we have our level of leadership is crew leaders that work directly with the uh, production people. So if it's not a crew leader, it's a labor first class or labor, they will work with that fellow, pretty much explain, hey, this is, for example, say it's uh, their quality's poor or jobs that are supposed to take eight hours are taking 10 or 12 hours, for example. Our crew leader will work with them, see if we can find ways to, to help them or motivate them to do better quality or find ways that they can be more efficient. If it doesn't work with the crew leader, we'll switch crew leaders. We'll have another crew leader come in and work with them because not always the crew leaders and laborers match up. We have quite a few crew leaders, so we'll, we'll float him around other crew leaders. Supervisor will go up, will go out. We'll have what we call a performance improvement meeting, performance improvement plan. We'll identify the issue. Okay, your, your quality's poor. I think that's a very good statement, your quality's poor. What does that mean? That could mean anything to anyone. So we elaborate. What's quality mean? You never clean up properly when the shrubs are trimmed. You have, shrub, you have clippings laying in the mulch beds. Okay, not acceptable. When you leave the driveway, we see mulch tracked on the driveway. You've been doing this the last two or three times. This has to stop. So you list the, what's expected. You say in a week or two, you set some parameters. You meet with the client, with the coworker. Explain what we're going to do. We're looking out for you. We want this to change. We'll meet with you in a week or two to see if there's been improvement and we're going to help you. We meet again. If there's been improvement, great. If not, we'll go to a corrective review. First one's a developmental review. Then we go to a corrective review. Then we go to a critical review. If you're not making it after all three of those engagements, you will be dismissed. They know that very clearly. It's interesting, I had a fellow years ago that uh, we went through this process. He said he didn't like wearing uniforms, okay? So he would take his shirt out off on the job. We didn't think that was a great look. I understand it's hot and so forth, but bubbled up, managers met with him, wrote him up, met with him. He said, you know what, the company won't fire me for not wearing my uniform. Got to the critical review, met with him and said, listen, you're a valued guy, we need you here, we want you here, but you must follow this process. Next time you will be dismissed. Very clear, okay? Guess what, next time was the next day. Came in for an next interview, he said, I can't believe you're firing me for not wearing a uniform. What was our response to him? We didn't fire you, you fired yourself. <laughs> it wasn't something that came out of the blue. He decided not to follow a company policy, so he was let go. Hopefully that answers your question. Anything else? What do you think about the drug policy? Any, any feedback on that? Think we're making a mistake? You think it's okay? Yes? I think that's probably the fairest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's all over the place in the, uh, with companies. They, some do that, some do other things. But I can tell you this. I've had about, we, have, we don't have a big problem with this. Like I said, we have 100 co-workers, but I've had two, two fellows that we brought in after the incident. Or, and by the way, it doesn't have to be post-accident. A supervisor might feel there's reasonable suspicion that he might be you know, having a drug or alcohol issue. And uh, two fellows after my meeting with them said, thank you for the opportunity, but I'm not gonna do this for myself. It's not the time for me. So they, they resign. About five years later, this fellow comes in and says to me, I want to thank you for what the company offered me five years ago. It wasn't the right time. I want you to know I've been sober for the last X amount of years and I always remember that and thank you for that. We probably had, don't quote me on this number, four or five through my 
30 some years or and maybe a few more than that that have taken us up on that offer most of those fellows are still with us and are great uh, have been productive co-workers so anything else any other oh by the way along those lines real quick we have an employee assistance program EAP anybody hear of that um, employee assistance program we provide three counseling sessions with a psychologist or social worker <coughs> it's confidential we as a company pay for it for anything dealing with anxiety relationship issues raising children you name it so we provide that as a company benefit as well saw a question up there yes what does a typical day look like for you? For me? Yeah. Um, I probably crawl in about 10 o'clock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Great point. I've, over the last couple of years, I've hired a, a general manager, vice president. I've taken a little bit of a step back. Um, I usually get in around 7.30, okay? I, uh, I manage all the human resources for the company, which is benefits, um, hiring, dismissals, et cetera. Um, my, Vice President reports directly to me. He manages all the other managers and supervisors. I'm very active in operations meetings, management meetings, um, sales meetings. Um, continue to meet with accountants and vendors, and pretty pretty interactive. Yeah. I have as a as a goal of mine personally. I didn't mention goals. Goals are critical. If you don't set goals, if you don't write them down, you probably won't achieve them. But I set a goal recently at my wife's request. Um, to cut back. I think I was out of the office about 49, 50 days last year, taking a little bit more time off, traveling, etc. So, other questions? I saw, I saw someone back. Maybe not. Okay. Yes, sure, Dr. Wayne. Can you just talk about the um, appearance and grooming and all of those things? Mm -hmm. and why it's so important for an employee? Parents is critical. Um, I'll just use an example. We get quite a few comment cards from our coworkers. Any job that we do in the landscape tree printing, we send a comment card out. The number of comments we get that the interaction with your coworkers was tremendous. Things like this. I was. I have an eight and a ten year old. Is what the client would say, for example. And you guys were renovating my backyard. I was very comfortable leaving my property, leaving the two children in the backyard for 20 minutes when I ran up the street, knowing the type of people that you are. What does that mean? Well-groomed, good communication skills, eye contact, um, bending over backwards for them in trying to solve their issues or their requests. I think appearance-wise, um, that's why we've been adamant about uniforms. Next time you're out and about, take a look at a Wawa or Turkey Hill or a one of the fast food convenience stores, you'll see our competitors pulling up in trucks, jumping out of trucks, um, cut off shirts, shorts with rips and tears in them, um, sometimes hair down to the ankles. I, mean, I don't know, you know. Do you want those people working on your property? I don't think so. Obviously, they are working at some properties, but. Uh, I think it's important that you have good appearance out there. The other thing we look for at the time of hire is communication skills. Not everyone's a great communicator, but do they, do they look in the eye? Do they seem to have passion for the position? Uh, do they have the right attitude? It, it's just incredible if you're in the interview process. Um, sometimes we just sit and listen to this person's problems for the last five years that they've had, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, they've, they've actually talked themselves out of a position. But uh, Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. 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 We want to be looked at as the good guys. Guys in the white shirt, we're the good guys. You know? Not that our competitors aren't. By the way, many great companies out there that, you know, Arborist Enterprises, uniforms, they look good. Uh, one of our tree competitors. Very good, healthy competition out there. So I uh, applaud this group. Good appearance here. I'd hire most of you in this room. So. Other questions? Very good. Hopefully, thank you so much for uh, putting up with me. Not a seasoned speaker, but I hopefully you got something out of it.